Hello my dear friends and welcome to the second lecture of basics of electronic devices and semiconductor physics. In the previous lecture we understood the importance of semiconductors in electronic devices. So we must go ahead and see what more can be understood or done in semiconductors so we can use them for electronic devices. From all the elements that have four valence electrons which is the basic qualification of semiconductors like germanium, carbon and silicon. We primarily use silicon for electronic device fabrication. Apart from being a semiconductor, silicon is widely abundant. In fact, it is the most common element found in Earth's crust. This makes silicon a very cheap option for electronic device fabrication. This silicon is purified to its maximum to be used in electronic devices. Such a pure silicon material is called as intrinsic silicon material. However, to enhance the abilities of this semiconductor, we do a process called as doping. Doping is a process in which we intentionally add impurities in silicon to enhance its properties. So one can have a question of why to purify the silicon and again add impurities or in simple meaning why dope at all. To answer that we can revisit the purpose of an electronic device. As mentioned in the previous lecture an electronic device is a current controlling system and current is simply the rate of flow of electrons. So Somehow by doping, if we can increase the number of electrons, we can basically control the number of additional electrons by the amount of impurities we add, indirectly controlling the output current. But if we are adding electrons, we must add a space for electrons to go to so that there is a proper concentration gradient of electrons which enables the flow. Basically we add an impurity which has less electrons than silicon which means they will have a tendency to attract electrons which will be attracted from the impurity which gives an additional electron. Since silicon has four electrons in its outermost shell, it is called as a tetravalent element. Hence, to add an impurity containing more electrons, we add a pentavalent element. Since an addition of a negative charge is taking place, we call this as an n-type doping or electron donor doping. The pentavalent element used can be phosphorus, arsenic or antimony. We can see there is an additional electron. On the other hand, to add impurity containing a vacancy of electrons, we add a trivalent element. Since an addition of a positive charge or absence of electron is taking place, we call this p-type doping or electron acceptor doping. The electron vacancy is called as a hole, as it is literally an empty space in which an electron would fit in. The trivalent element used are usually boron or gallium. We can see there is a vacancy or hole for the electron. Since a pure semiconductor is called as an intrinsic semiconductor, a doped semiconductor is called as an extrinsic semiconductor. In the next lecture, we would see more details about the effects of doping with respect to a concept called as Fermi levels. Thank you for watching Learning on the Way. If you like the video or if you have learned anything new, please click the subscribe button and like and share the video. If you have any doubt, visit our previous lectures or comment below. Thank you.